Do you think that Sudoku experts solve puzzles the same way you do, but are just faster at it? They actually have refined their approach to make their solving much more efficient. I will share three of the techniques I learned from watching dozens of experts solve classic Sudokus. The last technique will seem counterintuitive and probably change the way you think about solving. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. If you look up here in block one, you may notice you have a one in column two, a one in column one, and this one in row one. One place left to put a one is right here. And then if you see there's a four right here next to it, and this four in row two, and two fours in columns four and five, there's only one place to put a four in block two. Greetings, friend. This is round five, puzzle three, Sudoku Grand Prix. I think it's a great puzzle to demonstrate some powerful techniques the experts use to solve puzzles like this lightning fast. And the first technique I'm gonna show you is a minimize the marking. And so as many of these hidden singles and naked singles you can put in a puzzle, the less cells that you have to mark. So instead of going right in center notation, for example, you could look at these ones and go, oh, I got a one right here, and I got a one right there, and so uh, I'll put two places for a one. And you go, oh, yep, well, that's a pointing pair of ones, since the ones are in block five in the same row, row five. Ones can't be here anymore, so there might be some ones there. And you can go here and go, okay, I got one here, and I got a one there, and we have another pointing pair of ones. The ones can't be there. We're gonna look at the ones right here. And you could go, through the ones, you could go through the twos, threes, fours, you know, you can do these ones right here and put a lot of marking down before you're really even figuring out how to solve the puzzle. What the experts do is instead will just kind of look for restrictions in the puzzle and be able to do marking and solving. So one restriction would be right here in this cell. Maybe your eye drew to it. What you notice is there's already five cells filled out here with a six, seven right there and a nine. If you just look across, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, there's only one cell, one possibility for this cell. Because of the restrictions in the row block and the column, you can solve this cell for a naked single eight. If you did Snyder notation, probably wouldn't notice that that's a naked single. But what that does is it'll open up some more solving for us. Uh, you can look down here and see with these fours, if you just kind of drew your eye down, you notice you can solve this for a hidden single four. And then if you went here in block eight, another common tip and time saver here is you might go, okay, I got two fives, five here, five here. I could put nine or fives in there. But if you just took it one step further and said, what restrictions do I have in block eight? Well, you have these two sixes and this six you can solve for six right there. And now you don't have to mark for the fives because now with the fives, there's only one place for a five. And so you save yourself a little bit of marking there. And then with these sixes and what you just created, a six here, and you see there's just a lot of cells already filled out in this middle band, this three by three block. These two sixes, we can solve for a six right there. And then with these two sixes and this six, we can solve for a six right here. So I want to hear from you. What's one tip or technique you learned from watching someone else solve? Please put it in the comments. Tell us where you learned it. Your comments help build the best Sudoku community on YouTube. Help me reach out to more people who want to improve their solving. And I respond to each and every comment I receive. I would love to hear from you. Okay, let's look here now with what we did is we've created more restriction across row Two. And what you might notice is you don't see a seven in the row, but there's a seven right there covering this cell. So you can quickly solve that for a seven and solve that for a nine. And so we're not doing a lot of marking, but we are doing a lot of solving. And then if you saw that there's a five here and we created these fives, we put a five here in block seven. And then finishing up here in block eight, the more you solve in this area, the more restrictions you make. We got these two threes, means this has to be a three. And you might notice there's a one and a nine, 
folks look at this cell you need a 179 to finish block 8 so this has to be a 7. Now in this situation you have a 1-9 naked pair I think this is powerful enough that you might want to mark that and the experts they might do a little uh, side mark there they might even put it out here in the ledge so they don't have to erase it later but what it does is this one nine will help you because the nines now act as a pointing pair and so you can't have a nine in these cells anymore because the nine has to be in one of these two cells of the naked pair and if you look at this cell right here now you'll see you put a bunch of restriction in row seven we have a one three four five six and nine filled out we need two seven eight well the seven eights right there you can solve this cell now for a two and now i'm about to show you something that you probably do all the time and solve cells but it's not quite what the experts will do and so we're going to do a little cross acting here you got these twos and this two you can solve this cell for two and with these twos well this cell for two displacing that snyder one we can solve that one these twos you can solve this cell for two and with these twos and these twos you can solve that last block for a two. I will tell you that this is not how the experts would go about solving this puzzle. They would not cross hatch all the way around. I'll explain that a little bit more with my last technique. But right now, I want to show you my second technique. And what I call it is the experts look to solve multiple cells at one time. Look up here in row one. You have quite a bit of restriction because there's only three cells remaining. You have a one, two, four, six, seven, and eight. We need a three, five, and nine to finish the row. You might notice that we have a nine covering two of those cells, and then a five repeats on one of those cells. We can use what I call my neat naked triple trick to solve all three cells. Whenever you have this situation, you know that this cell has to be a naked single, right? Because you have six candidates in the row and you have two more candidates in the column. This cell right here, has to be the three and then the nine can only go right there which leaves this cell to be a five and so just looking at solving one cell like maybe just using this to solve for the five we solved all three i can show you that again looking here in block two you have a one two three four six and nine we need a five seven eight right here this is a naked triple it's also a lock triple these three cells can't be uh, 578 cannot be anywhere else along row 3 because they're confined to this block in the row. And since we have a 5 and 7 right here and this 5 repeated, you can also solve all three cells with the neat naked triple trick. It works the same way, but instead of having a 9 covering two cells like we did before, you have two different 5s covering two cells and then one of those repeats. This has to be your 8. The only place the 5 goes right there and this is going to be your seven i'll remove coloring from there because we solved all three of those and then you notice we can solve this cell now for a one because we solved the nine up here and this to be a nine right here and we displace the snyder one right there solve this cell for one and then the only place the seven can go in column four is right there leaving us with a nice eight nine naked pair i will put that in there because It'll be easy to disambiguate those two cells. And now we're getting closer to that third counterintuitive technique. One thing I want you to notice, look how the seven cuts across row five. And then this seven comes down. We have two possibilities for a seven right here. It's going to be another pointing pair. Since the sevens have to be one of these spots in the block, you can no longer have a seven right there. The experts probably wouldn't mark this. Instead, they'll just look and see, okay, I got a seven here. Seven there, pointing pair, I can solve this cell for a seven. And then you could look and see these two sevens and this seven. Solve this cell for a seven, displacing the Snyder one. And so I'm going to reveal the third most powerful technique, counterintuitive, but arguably the best time saver. I call it sweeping the block. What experts do is they like to minimize their eye movements by trying to solve as much in a block before they move on somewhere else. Cross hatching, like I said before, makes you look all across the block and then come back. Instead, focus your area in one spot and then move on, and you're going to minimize the eye movement. You're going to solve a little bit quicker because you don't have to go back to that block once you finish solving it. 
We need a three and an eight right here. I see the three and we'll pull it over from block eight. So there's your three, there's your eight. If we're gonna try to work on block six here, you'll notice the biggest restrictions in column eight. So all we need left is a seven or a nine. Well, the seven's right here. You know you can solve this cell for a seven, and this has to be your nine. And then with these two ones and this one, we can solve this cell for a one. Now we do have a four and an eight that go here. We can't do any more solving there, but we can do a little bit more solving over here in this block because we need a three, five, six, you have a three and a five. So that's gotta be your six. But we can't put the three and a five there just yet. But we made a lot of progress and this is gonna put pressure over here into block four, okay? So what can we do about block four? Well, entering the block, I can notice as I scan the eyes across with these sevens and this seven, you can solve that four seven. And now we actually have enough information to solve here in block four a little bit further. You might notice you need a three, eight, nine here in column two. You have the three and a nine right there. So that's gotta be your eight. And then you already have a nine in row five. So this is gonna be your three. And that's gonna be your nine. Allow us to solve for the three up here in block one. And after that, we can fill up the three and the nine down here, which puts more pressure here in block four. Then you look over here, another neat naked triple trick for the four, five, and six. I got a five and a six here. Six repeated, so that's gonna be your four. The only place that five can go is right there, and this has gotta be your six. And now you have eight and nine right here. Well, with this nine, we know that's the eight, and that's gonna be a nine. So we kind of worked over here and stayed, and these three blocks kind of sweeping the block. That's gonna allow you to disambiguate the eight, nine right here, and then we want to move on to the block. Remember, four and an eight is what we need in these two cells. So you use the working memory to go, that's an eight, that's a four, and then this is going to be your three or a five. You look for the first digit that you can pick up. Here's the five. So that's got to be your five, and the last digit is a three. Apply the expert techniques you just learned to this next video. Thank you so much for watching.